Hello, Sarah Divinely You here for Astrology and Energies for the week of February 13th through the 18th. Um, this is a very Aquarian week, to say the least. So we have, um, we start out with the moon finishing up in Scorpio, heading into Sagittarius, a fire sign, um, which will kind of light things up because lighten not light not lighten but it'll like light as in light a match um because it's a fire sign so it will light things up it's gonna kind of set things ablaze but not in like a intense way i don't feel like but it will um square um jupiter and chiron in aries excuse me that would be a trine my bad um and so we will have that going on uh, it will square for sure <laughs> Venus and Neptune and Pisces as they're immutable signs. Um, so there will be some energy around that as far as fiery and feisty uh, and things to that nature. Um, so that's going to be the end of Monday the 13th and the 14th and I believe part of the 15th before it moves into Capricorn. Um we will also have Venus coming into a conjunction with Neptune in Pisces. Um, so Neptune is at home in Pisces. Uh, it's, it's duality, it's illusions, it can be escapisms. It can also be very dreamy and very creative. And Venus being a creative uh, feminine planet um, can add to the dreaminess, the creativity. Uh, there may be some um you may have some downloads you may have some nudges you may have some insight as to how to proceed forward and how to create what you want whether it's in relationships or art or uh you know work or whatever so have a little fun with it um try to avoid like escapisms i'm gonna keep saying that because i think as this energy continues to be intense before saturn and pluto make their moves in march um, avoiding escapisms is and, and keeping yourself well cared for kind of is an overall message of, of every, you know, moment. And escapisms can be anything. It doesn't have to be drugs, alcohol, uh, or things of that nature. You can escape with food. You can escape with gaming. You can escape with watching the news or watching too much, you know, just, uh, <laughs> I want to say brain rotting TV. Um, so if you're, you know, binge watching or, you know, things that are not, maybe, maybe it's just, you know, but I don't want to discourage it, but I also want to say be conscientious of your daily habits and your routines. Um, and really like as these planets are continuing to move forward, um, have your moments of binge, watch, binge watching a movie. Lord knows I've had them. I've been finding some good movies on HBO lately that I'm super stoked about. Um, but be conscientious, like, of how you're investing your time during this. And Aquarius, with all the Aquarius this week, it seems very intense because the sun is finishing in Aquarius, Saturn is close to finishing in Aquarius, uh, and we're gonna, and we have Mercury has just entered Aquarius and we will have a moon in Aquarius at the end of the week. Um, so that's a lot in Aquarius, especially the father of the sky, both kind of the, both of the fathers, like Saturn's the daddy, but the sun represents father. Um, and then we have mother, the moon, maternal, um, and Mercury, which is mental and trickster and mentality, um, and those sorts of things. Those are all going to be in Aquarius by the end of this week. Uh, we will also have on before all that, um, or during all of that, um, on Thursday, I think the 17th, no, that would be Friday. Um, we will also have the sun conjunct Saturn in Aquarius. So this is going to, I feel like, look like responsibility, taking ownership. Um, I do think that with all of this energy, we will feel like almost hardened um, in a selfish way. Like we're going to want to take those selfish steps to remove or dismiss um, thought processes, people, things from our world because we cannot take them with us where we're going. And so this week feels very Aquarian. It feels very creative. It feels very 
good. It feels like it's going to be intense because it may seem like Aquarius is very, um, like, I love you, but you got to go kind of energy. <laughs> like, you're not serving me. You're not helping me. You're, um, you know, this thing that I have is no longer in alignment. It's got to go. Um, I noticed today when I was sifting through my closet that I saw a couple shirts that I was just like, eh, gone. Uh, no, no, I don't like those anymore. Those, those I'm done with. Um, you know, and I was recently cleaning out like my jewelry and finding jewelry pieces that I'm like, no, I, I, I avoid wearing that. I'm done with it. And this could be people that you no longer want to contact or communicate with. Like, I love you, but I, you're not, you're not going where I'm going. So you, you gotta go. And so don't ignore those things right now, because the thing is, is that as this energy continues to intensify up until um, March, when Pluto makes its move and Saturn makes its move into new signs, um, things will only intensify. And later this year, um, later in July, I believe it is, we will have a transit that whatever hasn't sort of been dismissed or been removed, it, it's not going to be pretty. Um, it will be very hard. Um, but be conscientious of your choices. Be um, discerning of what you're choosing to have and what you're choosing to not have because you don't want to burn bridges. You don't want to, you know, I mean, there's, there's quietly letting somebody be and then, you know, so that you constantly have that door open, that energetic door open for them to come back because maybe they're going to, you know, shift their way of being uh, and then they'll suddenly align with you again. And therefore they're going to come back into your, your aura or your energy field um, and, and they're going to be in a different space so that they can come back in. Um, I have been feeling that for myself. Like I think a lot of people who, you know, don't, don't interact with me anymore may come back into my, into my aura later this year. We'll see. I don't know. Um, we do have, um, the 14th of course is Valentine's day. Uh, I'm not a holidays person, but if you are happy Valentine's day, um, and that Venus Neptune conjunction in Pisces does occur on the 15th. Um, and so the day after Valentine's Day. So there may be some rocky roads in relationships if, you know, you suddenly feel like the relationship isn't working. Maybe your expectations are too high um, for Valentine's Day and he or she does not fulfill them. I think that could set some rocky roads for romantic relationships or even friendships. Um, so there's that. Um, but Venus is exalted in Pisces and Neptune is at home in Pisces. So I really feel like the Neptune Pisces, or excuse me, the Venus Neptune conjunction in Pisces is a good transit if you're in a good mindset to, you know, respond to the intuitive nudges that you're receiving from your higher self, the universe, the divine. Um, same with the sun, sun conjunct Saturn on the 17th. It's the same thing. If you're already taking responsibility, you're already taking action towards the unique things that you want to be up to creatively or career wise or in your relationships, this, it may not may not hit and they, it may not affect you at all because you're already doing the things. And we tend to do that if we're highly intuitive or empathic beings and we're really tuned into those things. You know, like we feel the energy like way ahead of time. Um, and so we're already taking the action of those energies and, you know, we're thinking like, well, what, 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 you know, and then the transit occurs and it doesn't even affect you. So I think it's important when we're listening to astrology and energy reports, no matter who the presenter is, is that some people don't feel it until it's happening and other people feel it days, weeks, months in advance. It depends on the transit and where it is in their natal chart how it will end the action they're already taking in their life to, you know, make that happen. Um, so, um, we are building up to a new moon, but that does not occur until Monday the 20th. Uh, so I'll talk about that in a different video, but know that that's happening. And obviously, um, we end on the 18th with, uh, the moon entering Aquarius. Um, and so it'll conjunct Mercury, uh, and ultimately it will conjunct um, Saturn and move, it'll, there'll be like this magical moment with Saturn, the moon, and the sun 
uh, the Saturn at 28, uh, Aquarius and the moon at zero and the sun at one, like there's going to be this magical conjunction moment between this air intellectual air sign of Aquarius and the dreamy watery sign of Pisces. So there's going to be an interesting mix between this, all of this Aquarius Pisces energy this week. Um, and so I feel like and they're both very, they're both like 11th and 12th house. So they're, um, it's very much a tune into what you do and how you're engaging with your spiritual self, um, how you're responding to your spiritual self, uh, and your higher self and your guardian angels or your spirit guides or the divine itself, like how you're responding or how you're in, in um integrating all of those those aspects all of those nudges that you're receiving i feel like this is a very intuitive week now that i'm kind of talking through it um so um i'm trying to think if there's anything else if i just think it's a good week aquarius is very unique it's very individualized um, but it's also community and it's what you bring to your community. It's what you embrace about yourself and then bring that to the people who are in your world. And this could be your physical world. Absolutely. We do still have Uranus and Taurus, but it could also be your virtual community, right? Like me bringing daily um, shorts and then bringing these videos and then bringing lives on Instagram. Like I'm bringing more and more content to this virtual audience. Uh, and then what I do in my community is, you know, more like, you know, helping and serving um, and whatnot, right? Because I volunteer at a, at a food pantry um, as well as participate in other, you know, community, you know, community supportive um, events. And so, you know, networking, um, connecting with the people who are supportive, connecting with the people who you want to support. Certainly don't put yourself out there for people who, you know, don't want your support, don't want your help, um, or maybe they want help that it doesn't align with you. Uh, that is something that I really am attentive to is I want to help this person or I want to help this group, but they're what they're doing or who, how they're serving or um, something underlying about them may not align with me. So it seems out of integrity for me to support them. So I kind of step back and step away. Um, and allow myself when we when we step away, when we dismiss, when we release and let go, what we do is we tell the universe that is not right. That is not what I want. Um, and so, you know, but I want this thing. I want to serve. I want to help. I want to be a loyal friend. I want to have the support when we release. It does create space for um, a, those things to catch up to where we are, or B, it creates space for new energy to come into our field, whether that's people, whether that's a job or, you know, creative adventure or whatever. So, um, this is a good week. I like it. I like the energy of this week. We do have that Pluto coming into that 29th final degree of Capricorn, um, so I think the next five weeks or so is going to be very intense in the global, the world stage. We're already seeing a lot of intense energy in the world stage. Capricorn is um, structure, it's systems, and it's, it's bigger systems. So it's not really like how we are individually. It's more like what it's doing to the systems and structures that are no longer serving humanity. In, in a good way, right? It's it's going to take those down. So keep in mind that Capricorn has been in, Cap, uh, Pluto has been in Capricorn since 2008. So I really do invite you to look back at what you were up to in 2008 when Pluto entered Capricorn and um, kind of review 
and um, you know, kind of take inventory of what your experience has been of of Pluto in Capricorn. Same with Saturn in Aquarius. Saturn's been in Aquarius since January 2020. So take inventory there too. What have you learned? What have you gathered? Um, what has, you know, been a realization for you? Um, and, you know, take those with you moving forward. So that is this week. I feel very fiery about it for some reason. I don't know. There's not a lot of fire in the chart, but I do feel very fired up about it. I think it's just my Aquarius heart is being lit up. My birthday is also this week on Saturday, the 18th. Um, and so there is also that feature <laughs> for me. So happy birthday to me. And happy birthday to all of the other final degree Aquarian birthdays out there. I know I share my birthday with quite a few final degree Aquarians. Um, and so um, that's always fun. It's fun to, to have those little birthday shout outs and whatnot. So thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you. Please check out my daily tarot shorts. I'm having so much fun creating them and making them. I've been using Star Trek. I may shift to a different deck. I'm going to try and record them and see how they resonate. Um, and, uh, we'll go from there. So thank you so much. I'm sending you a lot of love. Have a great, great week.